I grew up in church. I was there every Sunday, and I've been a Christian since I was a kid. I grew up in church, and I got pieces of the gospel over 50 years. Oh, my 20-something years of going to church, I never remember hearing the word grace. I viewed God as somebody that I needed to make happy. He wasn't so concerned with with me as a person as much as he was concerned with if I was being a good person or a bad person. I never really saw God's love as a um, unconditional, everlasting love. I always believed in God, but you know I didn't think He believed in me. You know I wasn't good enough. There are people that are sitting in front of you that have been in church their whole lives. They've read the Bible, they went to youth camp growing up, vacation Bible school. They, they've been in church, wired in church their whole lives. But there's also people sitting out there that have no church background whatsoever and have seen enough people with church backgrounds to, to feel like they have no need for what's being taught at or what's being proclaimed at churches. And one of the things we've learned is that you can grow up in church and be just as confused about what the gospel is or isn't as the, the person who has no church background and who has never been to church. My hope is that in understanding really the size of the gospel and the weight of the gospel, you wouldn't miss out on all that Christ has for you in his life, death, and resurrection. And the gospel is way bigger than just, I believe this so I'm saved, but that the gospel bears weight on transforming our lives and increasing our joy and changing how we see the world around us. Um, I don't know if it was a new message or it was a message I'd heard a thousand times, um, but I just heard it. Now the gospel is not only something that has saved me, um, but it's changing me as well. You know, he opened my heart, and I got to hear the word like I'd never heard it before. It was the best news I'd ever heard. It was no longer about me attaining um, God's favor. It had been granted through Christ, and that was life-changing for me. Recently, I read some research that tells us that 90% of children who grow up in evangelical homes make a decision to receive Christ into their heart. And I think most of us expect those numbers. Of that 90%, only 22% are following Jesus when they're 35. And I think most of us are shocked by that number. I know I am. Think about it. We're losing two-thirds of those who make a decision for Christ. There's something wrong. Something seriously wrong. What's wrong is the gospel we're preaching. What's wrong is the method we are using to coax and persuade our youth to think they are in. They've made the decision. A gospel that becomes obsessed with making decisions rather than disciples aborts the design of the gospel of Jesus. Here's how I see it. The so-called gospel at work in many of our churches today is actually deconstructing the church into a society of the saved instead of constructing a society that follows Jesus to the cross. To solve this problem, some pastors think that what we need to do is ramp up our emphasis on sin. Others think we need to increase the emphasis on the wrath of God and the scorching fires of an eternal hell. Yet others want to refocus everything on grace and justification by faith. But these aren't going to solve our problem because if you tweak a weak gospel, you still have a weak gospel because what we think is the gospel is not the original gospel. So we need to start all over again. We need to ask, what was the original gospel? Or, what was the apostolic gospel? Or even more, 
What was the gospel Jesus preached? We need to be willing to let the Bible say what the Bible says and not make the Bible say what we want it to say. Maybe one reason why young evangelicals are walking away from the church today is because the gospel many hear in churches is not the gospel Jesus preached, and they want Jesus' gospel. So let's go back to the Bible together, and let's see what Jesus and Peter and Paul meant when they said gospel. What we will find will require a massive change. What we need to recover is the original good news. And that good news is what I call the King Jesus Gospel.